Freeman, uh, I've been fascinated my whole life with science, but I can also admit uh, that I've also been interested in theology. In today's world, there is great debate, there's great conflict between science and theology, and people have all different kinds of opinions about it. What is it about science and theology that causes such passion? I think the reason it causes passion is just because both sides are arrogant. Both sides have too high opinion of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to, to, to squelch the others. The, 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 the biologist in particular seem to be still fighting the ghost of Bishop Wilberforce. <laughs> Bishop Wilberforce was one of the opponents of evolution in the 19th century, and they're still fighting his ghost. And, and, <laughs> and on the other side, of course, the fundamentalist believers are trying to fight evolution, trying to still hang on to the belief that the world started 6,000 years ago in 4004 <laughs> BC. But both sides seem to me misguided and, and counterproductive. And it's unfortunate because, in fact, they represent only a minority on both sides. And the, the public pays far too much attention to their, to, to, to their pronouncements. In point of fact, the, the vast majority of re religious believers are not against evolution and the vast majority of scientists are not against God. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the vast majority are tolerant understand that both sides are legitimate and I happen to belong to the majority. But let's let's put aside then what people think in their past because it could be that, that the majority is wrong. The majority have been wrong about a lot of things. I mean, it could be that one side is entirely right and the other side is entirely wrong. I mean, that, that, that's conceivable. So how then do we look at the, the, the truth of the matter? What, what, what can we learn about science and theology that can help us to understand reality? How, how deep can we dig? Well, I would say that the important thing is just to be, to be happy with, with not knowing everything. That, that, that's, that's, to my mind, the key, that uh, these, these uh, fundamentalist scientists and fundamentalist biologists sort of have this obsession with knowing everything, that, that they have the key to the truth and everything else is, 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 is false. <laughs> And it's just the world isn't like that. If you look at the real world, it's full of mysteries. That's what makes it exciting. That uh, it's, it's mysteries of all kinds. And every time you solve a puzzle in science, you find two more puzzles waiting to be solved. So science doesn't come to an end. You don't exhaust the truth. And I believe the same is true of religion, that it is every time you talk to any genuinely religious person, you find that... that, that it, it is about mysteries and not, not about facts. It, from the scientific point of view, it is clear where progress is made. Uh, disagreements happen, but science does make progress in that we now really do know more than we've done in the past. But on the theology side, what really have we learned? What, what, what do you think... Uh, is our best understanding today? Well, I regard theology as a branch of literature, not as a branch of science. I mean, you know, it is, it, mm. it is, the theology essentially is about images of reality, or, uh, but but it's expressed in words. It is a, it, it is an art form which is mostly allied to literature, and and. Uh, so the great theologians have mostly been those who could write well. Mm. So, uh, and, and so I find it's like literature. I mean, literature is always bringing us new insights. It's not progress in the in the sense that you learn that this is right and the other thing yeah. is wrong, but you have new points of view constantly arising. So I think in that sense, theology also can progress. And we certainly have theologians today who are writing things which have not been written before. Whether they are truer than anything that's written before, of course, is, is, is a meaningless question. Because theology really isn't about truth. 
in the, in, in the sense of, of, of yes or no. But uh, you no, know, my theology, in a way, is sort of it's based on the idea of maximum diversity as being the sort of the, the, the value which I see in the universe. That if you look at the things which are most precious, for for example, life and human feelings and things of this kind, that they are enormously diverse. That mm-hmm. the, the life goes and brought a new degree of diversity into the universe. But the universe, even without life, is growing progressively more diverse as time goes on. I mean, it started out as a uniform cloud of gas and mm. it condensed into galaxies and it condensed into stars and planets and dust clouds and uh, all the rest of it. And at every stage of the progress, you had a differentiation of structures, things becoming more and more, and more structured and more and more diverse. So in some sense, I think that's sort of the, what, what, what God must have had in mind when he <laughs> said, if he has a purpose at all, that it is to create diversity. That's what it does. That's, so that sort of solves the problem of evil in a way, that uh, one of the big problems of theology is if God is so powerful, why does he let evil happen? And <laughs> <laughs> so my answer to that is that, that in a diverse universe, evil has to be part of the picture and and that our lives are valuable to a degree because they are precarious, because we are subject to tragic events. Without tragedy, there would not be any real meaning. That's fascinating to look at the universe as uh, as having... Per- it's fascinating to see diversity as the purpose of the universe and building into it the probabilistics we see in physics, the vast variety of mental diversities that, that we have. Uh, how has this been accepted by people when you talk about diversity? Well, I'm not a preacher. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't try to, to, to make converts. And, and <laughs> but, um, oh, I think people are... are, are um, Maybe mildly interested. I don't say that it's made a big, it has not made a big splash. I think many people would agree with that. Certainly, astronomers do. I mean, I talk mostly to astronomers. That's the sort of branch of science I find mm. most uh, exciting just at the moment. Mm. And that's what astronomers do mostly: is just discovering that the things that looked simple really are complicated. And the more you look at things, the more diverse they become. And you see that throughout the hierarchy of existence. From, yes, uh, it's even more true in biology, of course. That, uh, as, as Darwin said, the good Lord must have had an inordinate fondness for beetles. <laughs> <laughs> he created so many kinds of beetles. 